Welcome back to episode 30, Death's Daily Dose of Dota. If you've just joined us, um, you missed uh, pretty much a clinic coming out from Ehome in Flames. He's playing his Invoker in the mid lane to perfection. A lot of cold snap usage, a lot of rotations with Ghost Walk, but um, really just being map aware and taking fights advantageously with his team. We're going to hop into the game and see more team fights in this episode of 4D. When we left off, it was the 22 minute mark. In flame, 10 and 1. Fang, only 3 and 2, but he's having a great Lions time on the farm himself. We see that is true for several of our heroes for Ehome. DDC in the last place position, but that's okay. He is the position 5 in this case. Radiance and in flame, picking attack. up a gem as true sight, bought by DDC. That's actually not going to get dewarded there. Instead, are fortified. we see a rotation coming out from Inflame. He saw the position one Shadow Fiend in the bottom lane and says, Hey, I know what I want to do here. Doesn't get here in time, but that's okay. We'll see him rotate away again. Might come back to deward that one spot. Might be a little too ambitious for him, though. We see him moving up to the high ground. Probably assumed that it was already dewarded. Radiance bottom tower. He has the gem of true sight ground. now. And why not for a hero like Invoker? His invisibility lasts much longer than something like Shadow Blade. And he's able to deward, take away a lot of the vision there. A rotation coming out from invasion, but they're a little too slow here. Wonderful juke, if you want to call that a juke. Yeah, I got him. Fantastic Tornado into Force Staff, into Stampede to run away. And Fang is here to clean up the mess. Invoker, <laughs> he'll even secure his 11th kill of the game. Picking up a double damage rune now as if he didn't need the extra bonus damage. Invasion Shadow Fiend, the only hero who's doing a good job on farm. But uh, he's going to Shadow Blade against a guy with Gemitru Sight. In flame, not even using his spell combos, just right clicking with the assistance of that burst damage from Centaur. It's going to be a killing spree going the way of Yang. If you like killing sprees and Yang, I did an episode on his Terrorblade. Pretty good watch. It's basically a lot of illusions, but, um, well, illusions can be people too. Instead, we see another fantastic initiation. Yang having to back up though. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And another what is probably gonna be a double kill. We're gonna re-rack that just briefly. Because I want to take note here. In flame, one last hit. One more. We see him already turning away. Into a tornado EMP combo. Walking right up to Skywrath Mage just to ensure he gets off that last hit. Fantastic multi-kill on his part. Did I hear a squeak? And if he didn't have enough money, Dyer's middle tower you see is under it. Attack. He has the money now. Gonna be picking up that Radiance scepter. Top tower is under attack. Coming into the top lane. Radiant structures are fortified. And he's pursuing the juggernaut. Won't be able to do anything fortified. because of the Blade Fury TP away. But he will have his Aghanim scepter now. Actually, it looks like it was left in the stash, so he'll get that in a minute or two. He does choose to deny the top tower, though. The first tower that could have been invasions. I think the uh, bottom one was also denied. Instead, they're starved from a little more gold. An invoker, we see it again. The ghost walk, Wex, sprinting across the map at now near 500 move speed. He is ready to catch one of these heroes in the retreat. Yang has the Blink Dagger, the Force Staff. He's ready to pump out about 800 damage himself. He's instantly play. able to get out of that with the assistance of a Force Staff. And the fight's occurring here. Though we see Inflame hanging in the back. I, I just want to note, look at the beautiful job as we re-rack that there. I don't know if you thought Enigma was going to die there. But... He's even 
doing a little bit of blocking on his own. Forcing Juggernaut to run away. And in the meantime, just getting in some right clicks. With the assistance of Cold Snap. And a deafening blast. He will secure yet another kill. <laughs> He's on a mega kill streak. He has his Aghanim Scepter. Zero mana cost. Two second Scepter cooldown. But. He's with his team, pushing together. Centaur on the high ground. Fang in the Roshan bit. Pinging out Roshan. Even getting an alacrity. I probably mispronounced it as a clarity. Oh well. And at the 27 minute mark, we see our heroes leaving Fang to his own devices. DDC, DDC being a great position 5 sticking around. Radiant. But Ehome have their sights set on high ground. And with the assistance of the burst damage of Yang, in flame claims another kill. He's 15 and 1. Looking now to rotate to the top lane. We see a little preemptive tornado thrown in here. Shadow Fiend, that's not going to help you. Not with a gem of true sight on deck. EMP being put down. Stampede used to help Invoker get away. And good luck, Juggernaut, with your 390 move speed trying to catch him. With the three Wex balls, he's going to get away very easily. And uh, what I assume was supposed to be a counter initiation on Invasion's part ends up being a one for nil. Yang walking away on his own. And then Flame just takes a moment to regen some mana, regen some HP with three Quas balls. He's up to 23. Now that he's nearly maxed out his Quas and Wex. Instead, choosing to rotate, there's. A pretty standard bloodbath going on in lane, away from these waters. especially with a 28 to 9 score. Invoker just lying in wait, putting another alacrity onto your Ursa. 0.7 attack speed. What a great buffer! What a great mid laner. It's easy to see why Inflame makes this his signature character. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Even picking up a perseverance here. Probably we'll build that into a hex stick. We'll just be icing on the cake. The tornado EMP combo is a little off the mark. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. But nonetheless, our heroes at the 30 minute mark are ready to breach the high ground. So we see a rotation into the bottom lane. They have a creep wave here. And we see a very key Orchid, which will help secure the kill on Alchemist. Deafening Blast, almost securing the kill. And with the assistance of a black hole, he'll get a double kill. Juggernaut, the only one alive. Did I say Juggernaut was alive? What I meant to say was, it's a full team life. Fang. Picking up all the kills there. If he didn't have money before now, he is now just as rich, even richer, than in flame. That's a good, good, good position one. Dyer's bottom tower has and in flame, just using his bonus damage, the attack Dyer's speed, even has an ice wall in case there's a series of buybacks on the heels of this fortify. And the buybacks are coming now. So our heroes immediately jump back. He's even using the Tornado EMP combo. We'll secure a kill on the Skyrath Mage, but we'll finally die. 78 seconds. Dyer's top tower is under but attack. But not too bad. He had quite a run. He's up to 17 and 2. Has his Aghanim Scepter. Has his Perseverance. And uh, meanwhile, there's not Dyer's much of a fight going on. Invasion attack. are very hard pressed to defend this. I don't have to show you the graph. Come. You know who's winning this game. The fighting continues with Ursa playing the position one Yang. Some excellent initiation there. Now that he has a four staff, blink dagger combo. 
And in the 70 seconds, while Inflame was dead, Invasion nearly wiped themselves. Dyer's middle tower is under we see attack. him instantly ghost walk into lane, running at 500 move speed. Stampede will make him run even faster, and now that he's up, it's five heroes in the base together, farming an alchemist under the tier four. Dyer's it's middle 32 tower. minute mark. The first towers been. are falling in the mid after the bottom lane has been massacred. The GG's coming out. I told you this would be a clinic. And indeed, it is a clinic. That game will find Inflame, any of the game, almost 20 kills by the 30 minute mark. For those of you just joining us, it's um, worth noting we saw some great things that you don't have to play Invoker to be able to do. Even if you don't want to learn all the spells, we saw some very key rotations from our mid lane. We saw some great map awareness. We saw him carrying TPs. Very important. Well, that's going to be all for this episode of 4D, Def's Daily Dose of Dota. Let me know you thought of the episode. I'm on Twitter. My username there, Def Broadcasting, DEF Broadcasting. Let me know what heroes you'd like me to cover. If you have a favorite player that you'd like me to analyze one of their games, you say, hey, this is a great game. Could you glean some knowledge? I love learning just as much as you do. If you haven't already found me on YouTube, I'm there as well, Def Broadcasting, DEF Broadcasting. From all of us here at Deficit Broadcasting, helping you raise your score. Until next time.